Hello. It's been a while since we did one of these uh, gimmick table gimmicks. So, uh, yeah, here we are. Here we are with another one because I came across a gimmick, and we're gonna do a gimmick thing. Gimmick, yeah. Also, apologies for the fan. I turn it off, but it's bloody hot at the moment, and if the force cast is anything to go by this coming week is supposed to have a heat wave and it's supposed to be really really hot so the fan stays on so if that bothers you tough shit <laughs> anyways uh, got this at the flea market it's the Retron SQ from Hyperkin HD gaming console for Game Boy and Game Boy Color, also Game Boy Advance Beta. Compatibility with Game Boy Advance cartridges is a beta function. So, unfinished, you see. Oh, yes, you have know that. Rush on that. Rush on blah blah blah. Beta. Little tab thing to hang on to the thing. God knows why you need that. Uh, some uh, copyright information, limited warranty. Warning cancer and reproductive harm. Yep. So, uh, you know, CE, all your ROH compliance. No sad onion, so it's perfect for not in three. Or whatever the vernacular is. Anyways, it's the back of the box. You know, your controller, your console, back of the console. Anyways, uh, compatible with Game Boy, Game Boy Color cartridges via open source software. Game Boy Advance cartridges beta function. Upscales the 720p 4x3, 16x9 aspect ratio switch. Contains one wired USB scout controller, 10 foot cable, included memory card slot for firmware updates. Blah 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 and all the same thing in like a billion languages. Now you'll notice that the box is empty because I've already I've already been using this. But anyways, this is what it. Hold on. Hmm. Retron five. Ah. Okay. See, I haven't saw, haven't seen this before, but uh, apparently this did come with instructions after. <laughs> Oops. Anyways, so that's your uh, instruction pamphlet. You know, and uh, you need software to uh, setting up the Retron, playing cartridges on the Retron. And the same thing in like a billion other languages. Okay, so we got the language there. Pretty much. That fell on the floor. Piece of foam. Nobody cares. Uh, little Hyperkin logo sticker. Because we really need that. And a uh, card. Thank you for your purchase and support. Play well. Yeah, we'll certainly give that a try. Anyways. Toss the car. Anyways, uh, the inside of the box came in these two little packages. Very simplistic black boxes that will probably go into the recycling bin now that uh, I've done this video. And uh, as it said on the box, it comes with an HDMI cable, which uh, if you have a lot of electronics at home, and a lot of television stuff, you already have plenty of these go around, so you probably don't need another one. But hey, what's one more? Uh, you have a uh, USB cable, you know, with the C output, and a uh, power adapter, which is pretty important. Of course, if you got a USB power source, you could probably do that as well. Uh, this will set aside here because we actually do need that. 
coincidentally enough. This is the uh, Scout controller, which uh, coincidentally looks somewhat like a Super Nintendo controller. And if you don't know what a Super Nintendo controller, it's the thing that looks like this. Yeah, almost uh, spawn, you know, molding wise. I've, I've caught, well, this side has bumps on the side, whereas this is flat. So, uh, I don't know, feels easy on the hands. You know, it does has some weight to it. Now, I don't want to say it's light, cheap, or plasticky or anything like that. It's actually, uh, functionally speaking, well, we'll get to that. Anyways, let's look at the console itself, which uh, it comes in a couple of colors. I got this golden black variety. There you go. So it's a cubic shaped form factor and uh, you notice the first flaw with this unit is that there's no cover for the cartridge slot so uh, if you're going to store this away you want to store this in a place where you're not going to get a lot of dust because uh, yeah that's a naughty thing but aside from that you got your uh, your power switch your reset button and your one controller slot, which is USB, and uh, you got your uh, Type C power source, your uh, micro SD memory card comes with a 512 megabyte cartridge card thing. I don't know why I said cartridge, but there you go. HDMI output and a switch to switch between 4x3 and 16x9 aspect ratio. The 16x9 stretches the image, the 4x3 gives you the usual well, 4x3. One is good for Game Boy Color and Game Boy, the other is good for Game Boy Advance. And that's why it's there, otherwise you wouldn't really bother. Unless you want to blow up the Game Boy image to a rectangle, and God knows why you want to do that. Anyways, it's a nice little looking gimmick, for the most part. Quite a bit of weight to it. But, uh... Yeah, let's plug it in and check it out, I suppose. So before I did anything with the Retron, I checked to see on the website if there was any new firmware to this thing, and sure enough, there was a 1.2 update as I'm recording this, which is supposed to fix some of the issues this thing had. So I went ahead and updated the firmware, which is a ridiculous process where you need a separate piece of software to insert the patch into your micro SD card, and, you know... The, inst the box instructions would have been nice to include Hyperkin, but whatever. So yeah, if you buy the system and you start it up and you don't see this number underneath the logo, you might need to update the firmware, look up instructions online on how to do that because you're not getting any help out of the box. You're just getting a little piece of... Anyways. So once that was done, I tried out a few games. This being an emulator machine, the Retron will take a few seconds to load up your game into memory. Some games take longer than others, especially in regards to Game Boy Advance games, which can take up to a minute, depending on the game. For a device of this nature, it's to be expected, and in, in fairness, some games load fairly quickly, but it's already knocking off points in the convenience department. Also, side note, if you pop in a seemingly common game pack and it's not loading, 9 times out of 10, you should probably clean the game pack and try again. That usually fixes the problem but that exposed cartridge slot with no cover doesn't help matters either. Now in terms of performance, when it comes to the Game Boy and Game Boy Color side of things, it runs like a dream. Playing this with the Switch set to 4x3 resolution, it looked to be presented in the correct resolution with nothing looking stretched or blurry, no borders or anything like that which doesn't bother me, for, but for those who'd want something to fill the black void, eh. The sound emulation is pretty spot on, the lag is minimal to non-existent on that front alone and from the various games that I've sampled, I thought it performed admirably. However, Game Boy games only have one color palette and it's usually whatever default that pops up if you were to play this on a Game Boy Color, meaning colored sprites one way, background elements another, which I never really liked as a look for the Game Boy games. I prefer the more monochrome appearance or at least the way the Super Game Boy handled colors, which by the way, the Retron SQ does not have Super Game Boy compatibility. So if you're looking to play something like 
Donkey Kong 94 or some other game that had special borders, color palettes, or rare sound enhancements, you're not going to get that from the Retron. A bit of a shame because I would have liked that option. Hell, any options would have been nice, but there's no menu to be found. It just loads the game and boom, done. For an emulation machine, I found that surprisingly bare bones. Especially considering the other Hyperkin emulation box, the Retron 5, had like a gazillion options in comparison. Also, because it's an emulation box, those multi-cart things you might have laying around won't work. It'll load up the menu, but picking a game will not load the game that you picked. I'd imagine using an EverDrive of, or something of that ilk would probably yield the same result or worse. But I guess the big deal is how does Game Boy Advance compatibility fare? That's in beta, as it says on the box. Well, for those who don't know what beta means, it means unfinished. And that's what GBA emulation is on the system, unfinished. I tried a couple of games, and while some of them run fine and perhaps even good especially if you pop the switch to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Some of them have visual glitches like Mega Man and Bass is missing some shade and stuff. Some have slight performance issues and some special titles such as the classic NES series line simply refuse to load. I'd imagine if you dig a bit deeper, you might find some more issues, but the reality is if you're looking to use this to play nothing but Game Boy Advance games, bear in mind that the box says this feature is in beta for a reason. But when it works, it works fine. And when it doesn't, well, you've been warned. Oh yeah, I forgot about the gamepad that's included with the system. The Scout gamepad. First impressions is a solid recreation of the Super Nintendo gamepad with the bumps included. You know, it feels good in the hands. Buttons work alright, as do the triggers. The D-pad, however, has an issue with diagonal or rolling inputs. Trying to slide in some Mega Man games or doing some fireballs here and there brought up this issue. And to be fair, it's something of a common ailment with a lot of these aftermarket controllers. But I've played with worse gamepads of this ilk, and this is certainly workable at the very least if you have nothing else. Haven't tried any other USB gamepads with this thing, and honestly didn't care to try, but what's the worst that could happen, right? <laughs> Okay, yeah, I had some other ending planned, but it looked like crap, so this is how we're ending it, pretty much. So yeah, that's the Retron SQ. It's a cube. It's cube-shaped. It plays your Game Boy games. It plays your Game Boy Color games fine. GBA games... Eh! But then that's what firmware is for, with this little card. And, uh, that's pretty much it, really. The one stock controller functions, but if you want to use anything else, uh, you're shit out of luck. And they, I know they had, like, a couple, they listed a couple of their own, uh, controllers that you could buy and use, or their own wireless receiver, that sort of thing, if you want to go for that route, but, I don't know, whatever. Uh, and, uh... You know, some people mentioned something about, you know, using a keyboard to hack stuff, and uh, I don't want to touch that stuff. You know, if you want to go that route, you know, that that's up to you. But for me personally, uh, I, I honestly don't care for that sort of thing. I try just, you know, try to work it, you know, what I got out of the box and leave it at that. But, uh, you know, on that note, eh, it's okay. Could it have been better? Sure, why not? But, uh... It does what it does. Uh, well, I, I don't like that there's no cover for the uh, the cartridge slot. That That's kind of like... Uh, what I ended up doing was like, I kept a bag. I just kept it in the little bag. Like, uh, I demonstrate that I have, got, I have the camera. Anyways. So, uh, yeah, it's okay. I guess, I suppose. There's probably better ways for you to play your uh, Game Boy games on the screen. You know, Game Boy Player, Super Game Boy... I'm sure there's an aftermarket Game Boy TV thing out there, if you want to go that route. But, uh, I don't know. It works. That's really the best I could say about it. It works. And, uh, yeah. That's all I got. Thanks for uh, watching. Till next time, take care. Be safe. Good night. I'm going to bed. Bye.